Morning, Mr. Mbanga. Morning, Madam Speaker. How are you this morning? Sipilile, Madam Speaker, I am Kose Ninja Anime. Good, 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 good. Is everything okay on the system? Uh, you, you are okay. You are okay. It's just okay. that uh, on top of it, there is some flaring. Can't help that. Yeah, yeah. But his screen is up. We are was also on the Zanga Pambili. I think Silele a little bit. If you forward, if you forward it a bit, his screen, the Linda with his laptop. Yeah, because Ibu Ibu Lala. Ibu Lala. You want this? You want this? That's bad, but it. I think it pays a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Just a lot of money. Yeah, cut up a piece. Yeah. Yeah, cut up a piece. Yeah, cut up a piece. Yes, but but I'm worried. I'm able. Yeah, blurish. I. I. I learn to. I. The background. What do I do but, then? But, but the volume is fine and everything. Um, it's just that in jail, like you are manu catch shaker, like in Galos, man is. Fine, man. Okay, Zalbona, maybe my dear will have Let me go and sit at the veranda. Okay, I'll call you. Veranda. Okay, yeah, I'll okay. see. We'll see, ma'am. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs>
Bagumbanga, is that okay? Is it yes. better? Let yep. me say, is it better? No, it is, Madam Speaker. It is. Okay, then. Thank you. No, no, it Thank is. You. I'm happy. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. All right.
Recording in progress. Recording stopped. Morning, honorable members. We will be studying shortly. Projects. I'm here, Mr. Caso. Recording in progress. Good morning, honorable members. Morning, honorable speaker. I do the same thing. Morning, honorable speaker. Morning. Honorable members. Nice hairstyle. Uh, nice hairstyle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Soon. I honorable Imam liked this hairstyle as well yesterday when he saw me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable members, are there any apologies? Madam Speaker, I have an apology of the deputy speaker and uh, House Chairperson in Dombella. Uh, we had an apology of Honorable Frolic, but we realized that she is now on the platform. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Those are the apologies I have. <coughs> Excuse now, me, Madam Speaker. I, I, I was sorry. I was, oh, I, I, you too. I, yeah, also sorry. here. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Dombella. So, in a sense, we have one apology, the deputy speaker. Thank you very much, honorable members. May we now consider the agenda before us? Are we happy? Can someone move for the adoption of the agenda, please? I move, speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable Singh. Um, honorable members. I second, honorable speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Sakute. Agenda having been adopted, Honorable Members, we then proceed to deal with the minutes of the 23rd of November. Will you please flight the, uh, yeah. Minutes of the 23rd. Honorable members, those are the minutes. Can somebody move for the adoption of the minutes if they are a true reflection of the discussions last week? Honorable Speaker, Honorable Froliki, I move for the adoption. Thank you, Akbar Frolik. Thank you, Akbar uh, Speaker. <laughs> Thank you. Any second, honorable members? Let's all move for, uh, for second the adoption of the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Lissuma. Adoption Honorable of the minutes, Speaker, so, not the agenda. Adoption of the minutes, yes. Thank you. Honorable members, minutes having been adopted, shall we then consider 
matters arising out of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Caso, are there any matters arising? Madam Speaker, the Joint Program Committee will be meeting after this uh, meeting at quarter past nine. It will consider the framework for 2024. And as part of the presentation of the program in this meeting, the programming whip will also present the proposed framework. Uh, thanks, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much, honorable members. That was it. Is that the only matter arising, honorable members? No, my hand is up, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Mkalipi. Uh, on the minute, Speaker, there is an issue regards to the venue on the because we don't have Parliament as we speak. We wanted to get the sense what will happen after elections. And Mr. Caso updated the programming meeting last week to say that you are busy looking for bigger venues. Can we get an update of that? Because I believe that soon Parliament will be in recess. And it will be unfair for us when we go on recess and come back next day without knowing what will happen in terms of all members of parliament to converge in one venue to do the work of parliament. Thanks, Speaker. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Mkalipi. Maybe I should respond to that. Honorable Mkalipi, Honorable Members, the directive I have given to the STP and to Mr. Caso as, as our table, uh, as our secretary of the NA, is that I am giving them up to the end of the financial year. And the end of the financial year is, uh, I think, March. From the first, we should operate in a physical form. So we need to find the venue. It doesn't matter where we find it. Honorable members should also consider that when we look for uh, venues, we also have to consider the cost of that venue per day or per session. So there are a few venues which we had agreed should be explored. So we will get a report, definitely. It could be that we may be able to meet even before the end of the financial year in a physical format. But for now, I had said to them, because of the difficulties we seem to be having, that they must push to make sure that come end of the financial year 2023, that we have a venue where we'll be meeting throughout. Remember that the venue that will be securing will be a venue which we'll be using right up to the time when our, our parliament is ready, they are available once it's handed over to us. For now, we can't be organizing venues for each sitting. We need to just have an arrangement that's going to cater for our needs right up to the end of the restoration process. So, Honorable Kalipi, it is a matter which we are dealing with, but what I am refusing, which I made clear to the officials is that I don't want to be told that a venue is available for SONA. Yes, there's a venue for SONA. Yes, there's a venue for the budget. But I want to be told that post-budget, starting from end of the financial year, going forward, this is the venue we're going to be utilizing for our settings. So that is where we are, honorable members. I hope my explanation is understood, honorable members. Thank you. I don't see there are no hands. Uh, we then proceed, honorable members, to deal with other matters arising if there are any. If there are none, we then proceed, honorable members, to look at the committee section report from Ms. Kiba. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Good morning to you and to the honorable members and to all my colleagues. I will present the report of the committee section bills before the committees of the National Assembly. Uh, my report will start from slide number two. On this slide, uh, I provide a summary that there are 36 ordinary bills before the National Assembly committees and uh, the 
allocation and the division is as indicated on the on the slide, Madam Speaker. Then secondly, Madam Speaker, I will also focus my presentation only on updates on the priority bills that are currently before the committees, as well as providing highlights on all matters, bills and matters that have been finalized during this week. The next reporting slide will be slide number seven. The preservation and development of agricultural land bill before the PC on agriculture has been finalized by the committee. Next is slide number eight. National Youth Development Agency Amendment Bill before the PC on women, youth and persons with disabilities has also been finalized. Then on slide number 12, the registration of monthly marriages, marriages bill before the PC on home affairs, which is a private member's bill, was since withdrawn in terms of the NA rule 334. And Madam Speaker, this rule provides that the person in charge of a bill introduced in the assembly may withdraw the bill at any time before the second reading of the bill is decided. The next uh, slide will be slide number 14. The National Small Enterprise Amendment Bill, which is a priority bill, uh, that committee intend to finalize the bill on the 5th of December. Next is slide number 15. Slide number 15, which is also a priority bill, public procurement bill before the Standing Committee on Finance. The committee intends to finalize the bill by tomorrow. Next is slide number 16. The two bills on that slide, first is the Children's Amendment Bill, which is a private member's bill. The Committee on Social Development have, has finalized that bill yesterday, as well as the Independent Policy Police Investigative Directorate Amendment Bill before PC on Police was also finalized. On slide number 19, the Public Service Commission Bill, which is a private member's um, a, a priority bill as well, will be finalized by the first term of 2024. On slide number 26, On, on slides number 26 and 27, Madam Speaker, it's matters related to the medium-term budget policy statements. All the dates on these two slides are, as was presented last week, the committees are on set and they will be finalizing the work on these instruments as indicated on the slides. Just one slide, number 26, where I wish to report that the revenue laws amendment bill before the SC on finance, was not finalized as planned. The committee has proposed amendments on the bill and the committees are waiting responses from the Minister of Finance, which are expected at least uh, within 14 days. Then on slide number 20, 27, I have just been informed that the Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services has uh, finalized the vacancy or on the Human Rights Commission. Then on slide number 29, the two matters that were referred to the PC on justice, the one on relating to a complaint brought by justices on the Constitutional Court against Judge President Thorpe, as well as the matter on the findings of gross misconduct against Judge N. Mutata, both matters were since finalized by the Portfolio Committee on Justice. In slide number 30, the, co the other committee on flood disaster relief and recovery has um, finalized its work on this on the of the other committee on the 27th of November as planned. Then slide number 31 and 32, which are the two last reporting slides. Here we're just providing information on the program of the other committee on general intelligence laws amendment bill, which the committee intends to finalize its work on the 28th of February, 2024. And obviously this is subject to uh, their program being uh, approved up to next year. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Ms. Giba. Honorable members, 
I see the hand of Honorable Hendricks. May I recognize you? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it's a pleasure for Al Jama to uh, withdraw our private uh, the registration of uh, Muslim marriages uh, private bill, uh, and this will uh, will assist in going forward with regard to the uh, let's call it one statute marriage act. However, Honorable House Chair, um, we we are most probably going to ask the Constitutional Court for an extension. And uh, I'm just worried that the Constitutional Court will be very upset because this matter relating uh, to Muslim marriages has been uh, in the court several times and several extensions have been asked. I want to bring to your attention, Honorable Speaker, that al took the advice of senior counsel and their advice is that the action of the minister uh, to enable the Nikas to be put on the on the population national registry means that we have complied with the constitutional court order. And instead of applying for an extension, uh, the legal people must consider asking the uh, telling the constitutional court for a variation in their judgment. This is one of the few times, honourable speaker that the Constitutional Court made the judgment and said, please approach us if you want a variation, because we know that the judgment of the Constitutional Court is final. So I feel that this will take a lot of pressure of the Sixth Parliament, because we are busy with two redundant bills. Uh, number one, we are going to ask for an extension with regard to the Marriage, uh, to, to the marriage Act. I don't think that's necessary. Secondly, there are amendments to the Divorce uh, uh, Act that is now going to the Council of Provinces. We are just going to waste their time, we're going to waste the time of the President, because a minister, by uh, 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 making the necessary arrangements uh, for the NICA to be placed on the uh, National Population Register, means that we complied with the court order. Why must Parliament now go through all these unnecessary polls uh, 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 and put a lot of pressure on us for public participation for because the National Council of Provinces may send the bill for public participation because the, the amendments to the divorce bill remains unconstitutional because Jewish and Indian women, they don't have access to the divorce court. So I create unnecessary problems for us. But I'm very happy that we have taken the step and that you have now uh, accepted uh, the withdrawal of my private member's bill. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Hendricks. I now recognize the hand of the Honorable Chief Whip of the Majority Party, Honorable Machutina. Uh, uh, shukra. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Honourable Speaker, good morning. and all, all Honourable Members on the on the platform. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, let me start by um, accepting and appreciate the report from the committee section. I have just two things to raise. One, one is receiving a lot of correspondence with regards to the Copyright Act. What is what is the status of the copyright? Uh, we know that uh, there's been protest uh, 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 throughout uh, uh, by artists and, 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 and other uh, associates. Is there anything that has been referred to Parliament on the, on the copyright? The second one, Honourable Speaker, we appreciate that uh, the, the, the Portfolio Committee on Justice has uh, finalised the report on uh, uh, Judge Mutata and uh, Judge Slope. And that uh, is supposed to come to the National Assembly and the requirement for such uh, a report uh, to be adopted or not adopted, it needs a two-thirds majority. Given the tight schedule of, uh, of, of National Assembly between now and the rise of the, of the House, it, uh, it, I see no uh, uh, possibility of uh, tabling that report because it will need physical attendance. Notwithstanding 
the fact that uh, it's a festive season for the city hall. With this short uh, uh, notice, we might not be able to get that um, uh, a city hall for 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 physical uh, sitting of the national uh, assembly. I therefore make a proposal, honourable speaker, that we consider to to convene a special um, a, a sitting in uh, in January. Uh, to 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 deal with this uh, report. Moreover, that uh, there are other activities that are happening where members are out there. Uh, for instance, some of us are, 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 are attending COP twenty eight. Uh, so some some of us and some members might not be in the in in the house because of 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 parliamentary commitments uh, outside the country. So I want to make that a firm proposal that we consider uh, a, 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 a convening a special sitting uh, in January. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Honorable Chief Whip. Uh, Honorable uh, Naren Singh. Uh, Honorable uh, Singh, followed by Honorable uh, Guahube, and the last hand is that of Honorable Frolic. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I think you changed the order around a bit, but uh, I'll, I'll take the opportunity. Uh, firstly, on the uh, on the Marriages Act that Honorable Hendricks was speaking about, uh, probably, you know, with, with all of us not being too familiar with it, it's difficult for us to intervene, but we'd like advice from the legal team on, on his proposal. And secondly, I read in one of the reports that uh, the Director General was to have responded by the 14th of November, and uh, the 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 uh, bills office says they are still waiting. Can we have progress on that matter? And on the matter of the judges, it's unfortunate that you know we've allowed it to be here. Some so what, Judge Motata's matter has been outstanding for years now, and I think uh, I agree we can't do it in the next two days uh, next week. But we must find the earliest opportunity to deal with those matters as the house. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Honorable um, Singh. Honorable Kwahube. Thanks, Speaker. Um, I, look, I, I echo um, uh, Honorable Singh's disappointment, um, but I just want clarity. Um, I think Honorable Frolic, the last time we had a discussion on this, uh, on the um, judge's impeachment, he indicated that this was a two-step um, uh, uh, process. So he can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. That firstly, there will be an adoption of the report by the committee um, before actually impeachment proceedings come to the House. So considering that the work of the committee has been done for at least two weeks now, uh, my suggestion is that the, 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 the report, the adoption of the report must come to Parliament and then the 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 national assembly um, impeachment process then can, considering the time constraints, be scheduled in the next year. That's my understanding of of, of the of the the process that it is a two step. But I see he's got his hand up, so perhaps he can clarify. That will be my suggestion, Speaker, if I'm correct in the understanding of the rules. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Guahube, Honorable uh, Akbare Frolik. No, good morning once again, Honourable Speaker, and to the colleagues on the platform. To Matter Speaker, may I firstly um, express our appreciation towards the Honourable Hanif Hendricks for the very mature manner in which he has dealt with the um, very contentious and important issues that he was raising on behalf of his party through the different legislative proposals that were there and also cooperating. We will continue, Speaker, on the outstanding issues that are there working with him, legal services, and where necessary, consult with the relevant government departments so that we can deal with the outstanding matters that may be there and the approach going forward. Secondly, Speaker, um, any report uh, that is processed by a committee, uh, the committee express a view on the report. Thereafter, the report is referred for quality assurance purposes, and that has happened now. And then the report comes back to the committee so that the committee can formally adopt. Once the report is formally adopted, it must be published on the ATC. I don't have the detail in front of me. Maybe Ms. Giba has the detail. 
as to the exact date of adoption of that report by the Justice and uh, Correctional Services Committee. And after that, the committee has done its work. It will appear in the ATC, and it becomes an issue of scheduling. And that is what the Honorable Chief Whip of the Majority Party has referred to. It's a scheduling matter now as to when is it practically possible to do it. And under the circumstances, as she has explained, um, I agree with her in terms of looking going forward, and we must consider a date towards the end of January that is uh, uh, when me most members will be available. Um, the other matter is, uh, Honorable Speaker, in both the Mutata matter, Judge Mutata and Judge Lope, there were a number of legal issues to and fro. Uh, it's not as if this has been in front of Parliament for so long. Uh, Parliament was asked after the Judicial Services Commission completed its work to do and to look at what they have done. And that committee has promptly dealt with it. So from the side of Parliament, there's no undue delays in having the matter lying in front of us for years. That statement is not correct. So the matter will be dealt with in the House once it is scheduled uh, by the Programming Committee. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honourable <clears throat> Crowley. I'm happy with the last latter part of your remarks, which is that indeed, from the side of Parliament, there is nothing which, which has been delayed. In fact, one of the issues which I've been discussing with the, uh, the Secretary of, of, of the National Assembly is the fact that this, is a, this will require a two-thirds majority and two, the venue. There is no way in which there will be no venue now available for us to pass this before the end, as we before we adjourn a uh, parliament. So, honourable members, shall we then close the matter, agreeing that we will then look for a venue for some time, beginning of next year, maybe end of of um, of January, as proposed, and and we will then proceed at that point. Thank you very much, honourable. Members, we then um, proceed and invite oh, Honourable Singh. I see your hand. Uh, yes, yes, Honourable Speaker. I think we uh, we want to get uh, um, uh, Ms. Kiba to respond to the question by 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 uh, Honourable Frolic. If if she had any update on the report, I think that's what he asked. Oh. Mm, okay. All right. Let me keep quiet. Let me allow Honourable Kiba. Ms. Kiba to respond. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. This morning at half past seven, the Portfolio Committee on Justice met to adopt the three reports, which includes the two judges' matters. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Ma Madam Thank Speaker. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, Ms. Kiba. Thank you, Honorable Singh. Exactly, that is the issue. We have now received a request from the committee, a report from the committee that they finalized everything and that they are ready to present the matter to the National Assembly. Hence the decision on our side that it would be better if we do it at the beginning of next year. We will not be able to do this before Parliament rises next week because of the challenges of the new as we all know. Thank you very much, honorable members. I then invite Dr. Mbata to present the report of the Bill's Office. Good morning, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. Um, Honorable Speaker, let me start by responding to the question of the Honorable Chief Whip on the Copyright Amendment Bill. Um, the bill was amended by the NSOP and returned to the Portfolio Committee on Trade to consider the Council's amendment. So the bill is before the PC on Trade at the moment. And going back to my report, um, I will start reporting from slide number one, uh, slide number two, sorry. On the second slide, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm not going to repeat what my colleague has already reported on, but I just want to indicate that all the bills that were finalized by the committees, which is 11 of them, they are now on the NA order paper for consideration. And nine of the bills are scheduled for second reading. So if we look at the list of bills, 
before Parliament, there are dates that have been indicated as proposed dates for consideration of those bills, which I think Honorable Tseke as well is going to report on them. Uh, slide number three, please. On slide number three, Honorable Speaker, I'm reporting on a new bill that was introduced last week, Friday, which is the Institute for Drug-Free Sport Amendment Bill. The bill was since referred to the Portfolio Committee on Sport, Arts and Culture. Next slide is slide number five. Slide number five, Honorable Speaker, the same uh, uh, department, which is the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, has a bill that was certified on Monday, uh, the National Sport and Recreation Amendment Bill. The bill's office is working on this bill and processing it, getting ready for introduction as soon as the department has complied with all the rules that are required for introduction. The next slide, Madam Speaker, it's slide number six. Slide number six, we are indicating uh, all the bills that are to be sent to the president for assent, which were passed by parliament last week and this week. The Agricultural Product Standards Amendment Bill, uh, the bill is now ready for being sent to the president for assent. And the second language of this bill is Africans. And the National Field and Forest Fire Amendment Bill, Second Language Africans, Correctional Services Amendment Bill, Second Language Africans, and the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill, Second Language is Shitsonga. Uh, with your permission, Madam Speaker, I'm done with our report. Can I hand over to my colleague, Advocate Van der Merve, to report on the Constitutional Court judgments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Advocate Van der Merve. Thank you, uh, Speaker, and good morning to the members. Um, I want to just also uh, confirm in respect of, of copyright, um, it is in fact before the Portfolio Committee um, uh, of, of trade. Um, they are aware that there is also a judgment um, that that bill um, deals with, um, the blind wow. SA judgment. And um, they are uh, um, looking at, at programming and, and scheduling the bill for consideration in, in that committee. Um, speaker, for, uh, just to, to confirm, there is a report that was also circulated on all the judgments, but um, I would like to just highlight a few. Uh, correctional services, as was just confirmed, was passed by the NCOP yesterday without amendments. Uh, our bill's office has confirmed they are ready uh, for this bill to go to the presidency. The, the deadline is the 2nd of December, but they are ready and it will be with the president before then. Um, the next matter uh, relating to regulation of interception of communications amendment bill, um, the bill was passed by the National Assembly and it is currently being considered by the Select Committee. I'm aware that there was a meeting yesterday. Um, on the next slide, the year I'm speaking now to the Women's Legal Centre Trust, uh, Mr. Hendricks also referred to this. Um, this uh, court judgment affects two pieces of legislation. The one is already a, in a bill before Parliament, the Divorce Amendment Bill, uh, Bill 22 of 2023. It was passed by the National Assembly and it is being considered by the relevant uh, select committee um, at the moment. Then in respect of the Marriages um, Act that is being developed, that bill, um, we have considered Mr. Hendricks's inputs regarding the court findings already being addressed in practice. Um, and that that is, although that is good, the judgment requires legislative reform. At this point in time, our office is not um, working on, on any application to the court because the legislation is not before Parliament. Parliament does not have the knowledge of what has been done. That falls within the domain of the department. However, what our office has been doing, um, and in fact, uh, the last time I presented, um, there was a request from this committee that we indicate to the minister that April 2024 for introduction is not sufficient. Uh, it will not be acceptable. And we have conveyed that message to the minister. 
um, and via the, the leader of government business. And we have also in, inquired again about an extension application. We have not yet received a response, um, but as I understand, there is a possibility that the bill will go to cabinet very soon, um, which then would, would indicate a, a speedier introduction. But we don't know that yet. We haven't received formal confirmation yet. Um, of course, when um, the, the department um, considers an extension application, they could um, mention the issue of the circular that has given effect to the judgment in practice. And that could then be used to either request an extension or a, an alteration of the judgment. So, so, but that is something that will be dealt with when that happens. It is, it is, a, it will be a strategy at the time, a litigation strategy at the time to be considered. So at this point in time, from our side, we are simply uh, confirming with the department what is going on and keeping an, 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 uh, our finger on that pulse. Um, we are also in, in contact with the chairperson of the relevant committee, who I know is also in contact with the minister on this matter. Um, in respect of Divorce Act, this is a new matter, EB versus ER. Um, so the Divorce Amendment Bill that is before Parliament does not deal with this judgment. But we have contacted the department and they confirmed on via email that they are in fact in process of developing bills that will affect this um or will give effect to the judgment in this case. Um, and um, so, so that will probably proceed in 2024, um, but the, the deadline is only 2025. So that is still in order. Uh, Justice has in the past given an undertaking that they will uh, introduce in 50% of the time provided by the court so that parliament has sufficient time to consider the legislation. Uh, thank you, Speaker. That's that's our presentation on, on, um, on updated matters. Like I said, there is a report giving um, full information on all the matters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Advocate Van der Merwe. Honorable members, <coughs> sorry, are there any comments? Any questions? On the bills? None, honorable members. I'm happy. I'm then happy to proceed and invite uh, Honorable Tseke to present uh, the parliamentary program for consideration. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, and good morning to your good self and all the colleagues uh, present. Um, Allow me to present the current program um, of the last quarter and also um, the parliamentary program framework for 2024 and the parliamentary program for the first term in 2024. The, there are no changes um, generally to the program for this week. Um, the plenary on Friday the 1st of December on World AIDS Day debate is fully virtual. And plenaries on the 5th and 6th December will start at 10 o'clock. Some bills, amongst other things, are currently provisionally scheduled for consideration on the two days. And since some bills, Honorable Speaker, um, will only be finalized on Tuesday, the three-day rule will have to be suspended. And due to the length of the sitting on Tuesday the 5th, consideration could be given to suspend the business in the afternoon for a comfort break besides the normal lunch break. Regarding the votes and schedules to the adjustment appropriation bill on the 6th December, which will be the last day, Political parties are reminded to indicate on which votes they may wish to ask questions, object, or call for a division. The information will assist presiding officers in expediting consideration of the votes. Communication to parties has been sent in that regard. I think I'm done with the... With the um, this program. If you allow, Honorable uh, Speaker, I can present the parliamentary program framework for 2024. 
Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Tsike. Uh, may I be guided, uh, Mr. Kasso, the draft, the parliamentary program framework for 2024. Are we not discussing it at the next meeting of the joint committee, or do we start here? Madam Speaker, we would recommend that we at least we have a sense of what we proposed at the JPC, so that if the <laughs> NA to make, can make that. But ma'am, before we, before we go there, concerning next week, there are two reports that will be coming before the House. It's the report of the Powers and Privileges Committee, which will be finalized tomorrow. Uh, we propose that that report be dealt with on, on Tuesday. There will also be a report of the Joint Rules Committee uh, on rule amendments. Um, we propose that that report be considered on Wednesday uh, afternoon. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Kasso. Honorable members, <coughs> Member Baroto, Honorable Member Thank Maroto. you. Thank you. Good morning, Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Speaker, uh, the programming whip has talked about the three day rule that uh, we propose, she proposed that it be done. And I want to second that because the last time we talked about a three day rule and uh, Honorable Singh uh, raised the issue in the House that uh, they were not consulted, but we had talked about it here. So I want us to confirm it here that the, we agree to the three, to, to the moving of the three-day rule. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Mabrato. Honorable Mkalipi. Speaker, can I get a clarity on what Bob Kassos just says now? In terms of yes. the powers and privilege report, can we get mm -hmm. more details on that one so we can understand fully what he is proposing? I that have... it is scheduled for for Tuesday for report to for table to, to Parliament to the National Assembly. He, he is proposing that is not on the program already, Madam Speaker. Honorable, <coughs> Honorable uh, Mr. Kasu, followed by Honorable Singh. Madam Speaker, the, the Powers and Privileges Committee will be meeting tomorrow to finalize the report. And I am proposing that the report be scheduled for next week, Tuesday, because it will be finalized tomorrow. And the same with the Joint Rules Committee. The Joint Rules Committee will be meeting tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And we are proposing that, given that next week is the last week of sittings, that report be scheduled for next week, Wednesday, for consideration by the NA. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kasso. Honorable Singh? No, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I agree with Honorable Barotto that we should formalize that we all agree with the three-day suspension. But just to find out when will that appear on the order paper. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kasso. That, that will appear um, on Tuesday, Madam Speaker, at the start of the okay. sitting, the first item. Okay. Are you happy? Thank you, Honorable Members. Thank you. We, Thank then, you. we then proceed. Are there any further questions, Honorable Members? Okay. None. <clears throat> it seems we've come to the part where we deal with announcements. Honorable members, are there any announcements for Mr. No, Kassel? Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, are we not supposed to take the yes. framework? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, thank you very much, Honorable Majutina. Honorable Majutina, thank you. Thank you. Um, Chief Whip. Then we, Ms. Seke, Honorable Seke, are you ready to present the framework for 2024? Yes, uh, Honourable Speaker, and thank you so much. Um, the Parliamentary Programme Framework for 2024, um, the draft framework is commencing on the 30th January up until the 28th of March. And I take it it has been circulated in preparation for the consideration by the GP, JPC meeting. And uh, with regard to the parliamentary program for the first term in 2024, um, there will be the 
the members workshop session, um, which is proposed for the first, Andrew. Go back to that one. Yes, thank you so much. Um, the members workshop session is proposed for the first to the second uh, February uh, 2024. Um, committee week uh, and or oversight is scheduled from the 30th up until the, the 7th of uh, February 2024. And the joint sitting on the State of Nation address is scheduled for the 8th of February at 1900. It will be followed by the debate on the President State of Nation address, which is scheduled for the 13th and 14th of February, with the reply by the President to the debate on the 15th of February. The National Assembly plenaries and mini plenaries are scheduled from the 20th of February up until the 28th of March. The budget speech um, is scheduled for the 21st of February. Further, the National Assembly debate on fiscal framework, uh, the tabling of the departmental strategic plans and the division of revenue bill are scheduled for March 2024. On the 19th of March, um, we have scheduled the questions to the president and the questions to the dep deputy president um, are scheduled for the 28th of March. Uh, I think further details, honorable speaker, beyond April will be made available early in the new year as the date for elections has not yet been announced. But the constituency period um, then will start on the 2nd of April. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaso. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Two, two issues, ma'am. We would like to recommend that uh, the debate on the 13th of February, if it is agreeable, starts at in the morning as we did this year. But if there is a different view, we'll start at, at 2 o'clock. But this year we started at 10 o'clock. Second, yeah. remember, we do want to emphasize that, uh, we, as Honorable Tsege has said, we at this point we don't know what the, when the elections will be, hence the program goes up to the end of March. Uh, honorable mm -hmm. members will notice that the NCOP will still be meeting in, in April, but we thought April could be used by members in their constituencies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kasso. Uh, honorable Buroto. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on this week of that, uh, the programming we've said is the, the, the training at the workshop week, uh, week the 30th to the to the 2nd of February. I see on the site it's written six parliament of boarding and exit season. Is this uh, an item that will be among other items or what is it? Uh, because I mean to populate it, uh, it is the workshop week days but we need to know what is six parliament of boarding exit yes. session. Since I'm talking so like this because we have other items that we would like being put into that workshop week. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Honorable Eburoto. Uh, Chief Whip. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Much, uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, in agreeing with the, the framework, um, I think uh, the programming uh, WIP and, uh, and and Mr. Castle will also uh, uh, put in for, for our 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 earlier discussion uh, uh, schedule the, the 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 sitting for the uh, for that report of the two judges uh, by end of January. 
Then the second one that I, w- I want to, to raise, Speaker, whilst it does not reflect on the framework, it's a concern that we have been having as the NA. It was about um, the, the women's um, uh, charter, which was a parliamentary program, but um, the, the NCOP ran with the program as their program instead of parliamentary program. We raised that to no avail. Uh, where the NCOP um, uh, corrected that. But now we have since observed that the NA, when it comes to a men's parliament, is doing the same mistake. Um, uh, we, we were surprised, some of us, to see that um, there was men's parliament on the 19th. Uh, I think it was on the 19th, or that other Sunday, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in Lipopo. And that was not even mentioned on the program. And our understanding is that sectoral parliaments are, are, are a program of parliament. Yes, they are led by the deputy speaker and the deputy um, uh, a chair of the NCOP, but, 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 but we cannot be uh, kept uh, on the dark about those. I just want us to correct uh, 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 these uh, 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 programs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chief Whip of the Majority Party. It shall be corrected, Honorable Chief Whip. Um, Mr. Kaso? Madam Speaker, just on the sixth parliament of boarding and exit session, we will we will ask, but I'll talk to the programming whip that we call it a workshop because mm-hmm. it's really what it is meant to deal with. That session will be dealing with issues of pension, uh, SARS issues, it's really not about the exit or offboarding session. So we'll ask that that will be will be adjusted. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaso. I see your hand again, Honorable Chief Whip, Majority Party. It's a, it's a Lika's hand, my apology. Really, Lika's hand. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, that provides clarity. That will be a session which will be a, a training session, train, not a training, a, a brief, really, to, to members about what, what their rights are, what the things they should expect, SARS issues, um, pension issues, gratuity issues, and so on. These are some of the things that will be dealt with at that uh, session of the 30th of, of January. So I think that if there are no other announcements, honorable members, that brings us to the end of this meeting. The meeting is now adjourned, honorable members, until next year, 2024. Next next week, there will be no programming committee. I thank you, honorable members. Speaker, I will not use the same platform for the speaker, other meeting. Yes. I wanted to say that if members could remain on the platform for the JPC, otherwise the NAPC is done. On Mr. Castle, ma'am, I was saying that I was saying that if I members hear could you, be... I hear you. It's the same platform, but I want to know: is there no break in between, whether five minutes or ten minutes? Let us, we can can um, can advise that there the, be a break if members agree. Honorable members, we're starting at half past. Shall we then put ourselves on on mute, please, and allow for the other group to join us at half past? Thank you. <coughs> Chairperson, we've already joined some of us.